about a king with a dark secret? Once there lived a king. He was very proud of his looks. He spent hours and hours admiring himself, looking at his reflection in the mirror. Hmm. hmm. There cannot be another king as handsome as me. And he felt very pleased. He dressed himself in the finest clothes and put on the finest jewelry in the land. People grew tired of him as he hardly attended to their problems. The king, on the other hand, made sure his hairstyle was new every day. But he covered his ears. Yes, you heard me right. He covered his ears. Guess why? Because the king had ears which looked like donkey ears. <laughs> and the only person who knew about this was the king's barber, Baiju. Baiju constantly lived in fear as the king would threaten him death if he ever told anyone about his donkey ears. He was not even allowed to cut anybody else's hair or shave anyone in the kingdom. Can you believe it? Poor Baiju. He couldn't sleep or eat. He was afraid to speak to anyone. His wife, Gori, couldn't stand this at all. One day, picking up courage, Gori asked him, Why do you seem so unhappy? Baiju did not reply. He just walked out of the house and sat by the pool. The pool was surrounded by many tamarind trees. Gori followed and sat beside him. She pleaded, Please! Tell me what's bothering you. I promise I won't tell anyone. Finally, Baiju opened up and told her about the king's donkey ears. I I'm so scared. I'm so scared to speak to anyone. I miss my friends and I know that I'm losing them all one by one. But, but what can I do? As he was talking, the tamarind trees there hurt every word he said and absorbed everything. Baju felt slightly better and Gori promised that she wouldn't tell it to anyone. But soon, even Gori became restless too. So one day, she went to the tamarind trees and whispered the secrets to them. The king has stockings! The king has stockings! And now, she felt much better. That night, there was a fierce storm. The tamarind trees were knocked down. The king was informed about this, and he commanded the trees to be given to the royal musicians to make new drums for the festival season. The festival season arrived. The people gathered to watch the grand performance. Let the music begin, ordered the king. The drummers began beating their drums. What did the drums beat? The king has donkey ears, donkey ears, the king has donkey ears. <laughs> donkey ears? <laughs> the crowd burst out laughing. The king, on the other hand, was shocked and he was furious. How dare the barber disclose my secret? And he immediately ordered the barber to be executed. Baiju was dragged to the court and he pleaded that he was innocent. Gori and the drummers were questioned as well. And finally, the king discovered that it was the tamarind trees divulging his secrets. The king felt embarrassed and decided to set the barber free. Dear judges, what do we learn from this story? We should embrace flaws and imperfections in lives and be honest with it as truth will always find a way to reveal itself. Thank you. Didet TV KPM
Ide TV KPM A good day to the wise judges. Today, I would like to entertain you with a story entitled The Wicked Witch. Once upon a time, there was a poor woman who stayed with her children in a little hut near the jungle. One day, she wanted to go to town to buy something. I'm going to town. Be careful and don't let anyone in unless you're sure it's me. She warned her children. A few hours later, a witch who lived deep in the jungle came ugly over. The witch hurried to the hut and knocked on the door. Who is that? Ask the children. It's me, your mother. Open the door. How can we be sure you are our mother? Ask the children. Our mother's voice is sweet and soft, but yours is not. Immediately, the wicked witch used her magical powers and changed the voice. She asked the children to open the door once again. It's me, your mother. Open the door, children. She said sweetly. Yes, we do sound like our mother. So they happily opened the door. As soon as they opened the door, the witch bounced in and tried to grab the children. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 
the moral of the story is always listen to your elders. Thank you. A pleasant day. I will be telling you a story entitled What We Plant, We Will Eat. Many moons ago, two brothers, Joe and Kim, lived in Seoul, Korea. Kim, the younger brother, worked hard. As for Joe, he was lazy but arrogant. One day, their father fell ill. He said, remember, my sons, what we plant, we will eat. Share this property and work together. After saying so, he passed away. After his father's funeral, Jung Kik came out of home. He wandered aimlessly and helplessly for miles until one day he found a deserted area with a broken piece of land and a small house. He tended the piece of land carefully. He made enough money to buy a bigger land. He was able to have a family too. Two years passed and a drought overcame the land. Slowly, his crops began to fail and his family was starving. So he decided to go and ask his wealthy big brother for a little bit of rice. Ha ha ha! It's my land now, said Jung as he slammed it on Kim's face. With a heavy heart, Kim turned around and started his journey home. Suddenly, he heard a frantic chirping above him. He saw a baby robin trying to escape from a snake that was trying to eat it. It tried to fly, but it was too young, so it just fell down on the ground. Its leg was broken, so Kim tore off a little bit of his shirt and treated the baby robin's leg. After the snake had left, he placed the baby robin back in its nest and continued his journey home. The next few days were hard. One day, the baby robin came flying and perched on their rooftop while singing a bouncy tune of thank you. It then dropped a huge seed onto a damp patch of soil. Kim watched as the seed grew into a vine which grew big luscious melons. In an hour, the melons were ready to be eaten. Father, father, can we eat a magic melon? cried his hungry children. Kim chopped open the first melon and was astonished to find so many gold coins. His family was rich beyond their wildest dreams. Jung got to know of his younger brother's fortune. Jealousy blinded him, so he decided to go and look for his own magic bird. He roamed the village for many days, and at last, he stumbled across a bird with a broken wing. He picked it up and sneered, I will help you, little bird, only if you help me become rich. After the bird's wing had healed, it flew to Jun's house and dropped a large seed into the moist soil. Jun watched as the seed grew into a vine which grew big melons. When the melons were ripe, Jun took an axe and chopped open the biggest melon. And to his shock, the melons were full of vikings. Unable to believe that all the melons were bad, he chopped open the second melon and inside were a huge ball of anacondas. As time passed, the melons started to overripe and started bursting on their own. Soon, Jung's house was filled with many other animals which ambushed his house. Jung ran away from home until he saw a huge house standing in front of him. He was surprised to see Kim standing in front of the house, busy gardening. I have lost everything, said Jung. Come, brother, let us plant a new crop together. For what we plant, we will eat. Joe regretted his mistake 
He was very grateful for his brother's kindness. He vowed to always be kind and work hard. The end. Dede TV KPM. Dede TV KPM.
I can't say because Nias was never heard of again. As for Philip Cole, he was grateful to his brave and clever wife, who had once again used her wisdom to outsmart an enemy. Thank you. Did it TV KPM.